Hey 215, Dr. J here. So I want to just point out some important points from the slides for this week. Because they serve as a reference, but it's usually helpful if, if you see a few things that I can point out to you. So aging demographics and life expectancy. All right, so even though this is a little dated, life expectancy in the US is around 81 for women and 76 for men. And there's different data sources, whether it's the CDC or the World Health Organization. So that's why there's kind of a, a bit of multiple numbers here. It depends on what reference you're using and, and what data source they're using to determine what life expectancy is. We should identify healthy life expectancy versus regular life expectancy. Healthy life expectancy is the number of years you can be expected to live free from any chronic disease. Okay. And if we just look over the last hundred or so years, you can see the number of older adults over age 65 has rapidly been increasing, especially within the last 20 years, and expected it's expected to double in 2050. You can also see an increase in the number of older adults that are over age 85. Um, if we were to compare women versus men, women live longer than men, and this is a, a fun topic of conversation. I'll challenge you to have this at the dinner table with friends or family. Why do you think women live longer than men? And I'm not going to give you the answer, but if you come to office hours or post in the discussion board, we can have a, a, a nice discussion and conversation and, and sort of figure this one out because it's really interesting. This is a life expectancy calculator uh, that you can mess around with. I have been sort of tracking myself over the years and, you know, the, essentially is what's the age when you input your life expectancy and then you can see the additional years that you're expected to live and then your estimated total years. So just as an example, when I did this at age 31 and 9 months, my life expectancy is 81 and a half. If I make it to 62, it, my life expectancy would then increase to 85. So definitely play around with that. This becomes more interesting when you look at your assignment for the week and your discussion board post. This slide is interesting because it, it's looking at the population or the percentage of our population across different ages. So at the bottom of the pyramid is age 0 to 4. At the top of the pyramid is age 85 plus. And you would expect this pyramid approach, but what is in one sense terrifying is the shift in population where we see the shape of this graph more of a rectangle. So if it shifts to a rectangle, what that would mean is the number of older adults are in equal proportion to the number of young adults. And this is one of the study questions that I want you to think about. What effect does this have for our population, for our country, for our world, if more of our population is an older adult? Okay, and, and what challenges that might bring? There's some, some slides next on the demographics of older adults are becoming much more diverse as a population, especially in the demographic of older adults. And I don't want to stereotype, but if I were to ask you right now, where do older adults live in the United States? You, you might say Florida. You might look at this map and identify where we see older adults in higher proportion and darker colors. These are the number one causes of death for different age groups. As you can see, the number one cause of death is unintentional injury in, a, in individuals 15 to 24. That's essentially one of the biggest uh, causes of death for young adults is car accidents. So buckle up, be safe, okay? And you can see for 
older adults or for all ages, heart disease is the number one cause. This slide, I would star and, and kind of think about. One of the study questions is, what are the ACSM guidelines for physical activity and how are older adults meeting it? And this is so depressing because it's essentially a flat line of the number or percentage of older adults meeting the minimum guidelines for physical activity. Older adults are just not changing their activity patterns. This is a graph looking at obesity. Remember, obesity is defined by your body mass index. Okay, And so you can compare and contrast two different age groups, older adults 65 to 74 or older adults over 75, and compare and contrast men versus women. This is an animated map showing obesity rates over time. So as the colors get darker, that indi indicates a higher percentage of that state has a BMI greater than or equal to 30. Now we're in dark orange, 25 to 29%. Red is greater than 30%. Take a look at, at Colorado as one of the only states that sort of has kept their population percentage down. Um, if I were to ask you what, are, what does an older adult do or how do they spend most of their time, a third of their day is sleeping. And if you take a third of 24 hours in a day, that's eight hours. Okay. And then if you look at leisure activities, you might be like, oh, this is awesome, right? A third of their day is in leisure activities. But before I move on to the next slide, hit pause and, and ask yourself, what does a leisure activity mean for an older adult? And if we look at leisure at time and break it down, watching TV, participating in sports and exercise, about 3%, right? Relaxing and thinking, reading, and other leisure activities. So, you know, a majority of their time is spent watching. So I want to just end this quick summary on what is the number one thing you can do to age successfully or age and reduce your risk of developing chronic diseases? And that's physical activity. It's the number one predictor if someone is going to age successfully because it's going to help improve your quality of life. It's going to help you feel good about yourself. One of the other predictors of someone aging successfully is their self-efficacy or their ability or desire to feel like they're making meaningful choices and accomplishing meaning in their life. So really, really want to try to promote being active. And physical activity does not have to mean exercise and sweat and difficulty and muscle soreness. Being physically active can just mean moving the way that helps you get around. So even just thinking it from the perspective of trying to reduce the time that you spend sitting as I sit here right now recording this video. All right. So just a, a short summary of pointing out some things in the data for you to help answer study questions for this week. Thanks.